Welcome back to this video series about microchips fan controllers. In this video, we'll go over some frequently asked questions and troubleshooting tips to help with your fan controller applications. The watchdog timer is a very important feature in our fan controller devices. If you don't understand how this feature works, your fans will most likely do things you don't expect them to do. The watchdog timer in microchips closed loop fan controllers works in two different modes. These modes are power up operation and continuous operation. For either mode of operation, if four seconds elapse without the host writing to the fan drive settings of one of the fans or enabling the fan speed control mode on one of the fans, then the watchdog will be triggered and the following will occur. One, the watch status bit will be set in the fan status register. Two, all fan drivers will be set to full scale and they will remain at full scale until it's disabled. And three, the alert pin will be asserted. So when designing your application, keep in mind that you have four seconds before the watchdog timer will be set and your fans will be set to 100%. Setting a specific fan speed or enabling the fan speed control mode will disable the watchdog. Writing to any other register will not disable it. So what are the different modes of operation for the watchdog timer? The default mode is power up operation, where the watchdog timer only starts immediately after power up. While the timer is active, the part will not check for a stalled fan condition. In this mode, once the watchdog timer is disabled, it will not turn back on. Continuous operation is enabled by setting the watchdog enable bit in the configuration register. In this mode, the timer will be reset by any access, read or write, to the SM bus register set. The four second watchdog timer will reset upon completion of any SM bus activity. Can the fan controller support speeds above 16,000 RPMs? While we only spec 1% accuracy up to 16,000 RPMs, the EMC 230X family can control fans at higher speeds. The TAC registers can actually go well over 31 million RPMs, but rarely do DC brushless fans go above 60,000 RPMs. Using a fan that could go up to 23,000 RPMs, we were able to show that the EMC 2305 could accurately and effectively control the fan all the way up to the fan's limit and even stay within 2% accuracy. One important thing to note about the accuracy of the EMC 2305 is that it is directly proportional to the accuracy of the oscillator you are using to count the TAC pulses. So the more accurate your oscillator, the more accurate your TAC readings will be. Will the fan drivers go back to 0% duty cycle if the watchdog timer is disabled before it gets triggered? The short answer to this question is no. Let's say you've used the clock pin to set a default duty cycle of 75%. After the spin-up routine, the fans will go to 75% and stay there. If the watchdog timer expires after four seconds, the fans will be set to 100%. If, however, you disable the watchdog timer before it expires, the fans will remain at 75% and not go down to their original data sheet default of 0%. Now that you have a better understanding of our closed loop fan controllers, let's talk about some troubleshooting. The first problem to troubleshoot is your fan isn't starting up. If you're in direct setting mode, most likely the drive strength is too low to start up the fan. Increase the drive strength until the fan starts spinning. Keep in mind that the lowest PWM duty cycle at which your fan will spin is not necessarily the duty cycle at which your fan will start. In fact, Usually the required duty cycle to start your fan will be higher than the duty cycle of the lowest speed it can go once it's spinning. If this does not work, make sure your fan is functioning properly by giving it full power and see if it spins. While you're in fan speed control mode, it could be that the TAC target setting is higher than the valid TAC count. The TAC target setting should be lower than the valid TAC count field for the fan to start spinning. Also, if the TAC target setting register is set to FF, the fan will not spin. Another problem you might face is the fan spinning at a lower RPM than expected. 
The situation will arise if the fan being used has aged, meaning it cannot spin at its rated RPM value due to wear and tear or is being obstructed in some way. The part will steadily increase the drive strength until the desired RPM is reached. If the drive strength reaches 100% and the fan speed has not met the target fan speed minus the drive fail band register for the number of specified update periods, then the part detects an aged fan, setting the driver fail bit in the drive fail status register. Another problem you could run into is the fan spinning at a higher RPM than what you have programmed. This is probably happening due to the setting of the minimum drive register. The fan speed control mode will not run the fan below the minimum drive setting. So, for example, the target RPM is set to 1000 RPMs, and say it needs the part to supply 10% drive strength to run at 1000 RPMs. However, the minimum drive is set to 40%, the default value. The fan will run at 40% drive strength, causing the RPM to be above the expected value. Now let's say your fan is oscillating or constantly revving up and dying back down. This could be happening because the target RPM is set to a value that is too low. The fan controller runs the spin-up routine to start the fan. The minimum drive in the spin-up routine is 30%. Suppose the fan speed is set to 500 RPMs. The 30% drive strength of the spin-up routine will drive the fan to more than 500 RPMs. As the part reads the tack signal from the fan, it detects that the RPM is well above the target value, thus giving up control of the fan. As the fan speed drops, it goes below the target RPM of 500, causing the part to detect a stalled fan and invoking the spin-up routine again. This keeps happening in a loop, causing the fan to oscillate. The minimum drive value can be adjusted to ensure that the fan keeps spinning at some desired minimum value rather than keeping it oscillating. Another reason your fan could oscillate is because the fan responds slowly to the PWM signal. Certain fans take time to start rotating despite getting the appropriate PWM signal. Such fans are often difficult to control at low speeds and experience oscillations after setting a target tack. Suppose we set the fan at 5000 RPMs. This fan is slow to respond to the PWM signal coming from the part and starts spinning up slowly. The part sees this as the fan having trouble to spin up as it is not getting the appropriate tack signal, so it ramps up the PWM signal. This pushes the fan way above the target RPM. Now the part is seeing that the tack is way above the target tack, thus giving up control of the fan. The fan revs down at a quick pace and can stop spinning altogether. This creates a situation like the previous issue where spin-up is invoked over and over. So here are some steps to take control of a fan like this. First, increase the update time. A short update time can make a slow responding fan to motorboat dramatically. Since the fan responds slowly, the part will ramp up the PWM duty cycle faster due to a shorter update time. This causes the fan to overshoot the target RPM, which then triggers the fan controller to dramatically decrease the PWM duty cycle. This causes the fan to drop far below the target RPM, triggering the fan controller to increase the PWM duty cycle again. This happens again and again, causing audible oscillations. Having a longer update time enables the fan to come up to speed before the tack signal is interpreted by the part. Second, Increase the reported minimum RPM, or range bits, to be as high as possible. So if the lowest speed your fan can go is 5,000 RPMs, have the reported minimum RPM at 4,000. This helps the PID controller have better control of the fan at lower speeds. Three, reduce the proportional gain factor. The proportional gain factor is responsible for the initial pull or push from the PID controller in response to deviation from the target RPM. A lower gain factor does not push or pull the fan far away from the target, thereby helping to control the fan better. Note, a lower proportional gain will slow down the control response so it will take longer to reach a new target RPM. Four, disable the 100% duty cycle on spin-up. Enabling the 100% duty cycle on spin-up will drive the fans to 100% PWM duty cycle. 
This can cause the fan to go way above the target RPM if spin up keeps getting invoked. Note, however, that it is possible that some fans will not start without the 100% duty cycle kick. Lastly, reduce the drive level for spin up routine. This follows the previous two points of not pushing the fan way past the target RPM. A lower drive level will prevent the fan from going way overboard. Note the drive level should not be set to a value below the minimum value required to spin the fan, otherwise the fan could fail to start. Now you should know enough to get your fan controller application up and running. Thanks for watching this video series.